What's up guys, Steve again from RC Tanks and Trucks 24-7. Yes, RC Tanks because finally we have a new RC Tank on board. This is the new one from Agora Models. It's the 116 scale Leopard 286. Now yes, it's 116 scale, so like Tamiya and all the Henglong tanks. So it would be right up at home with all those other ones as well. But this one is in kit form and you build it yourself. A lot of it is in metal as well, not just plastic. But check out that beautiful post that you get with these. It's got some quick, quick specs on the tank itself. 1500 horsepower, 12 cylinder diesel. Are capable up to speeds of 72 kilometers an hour on the roads on 31 kilometers backwards. It's massive. It's 68.5 centimeters or 27 inches in length. 19.5 centimeters or 7.5 inches in height. 23.5 centimeters or 9 inches wide. So let's quickly go through some of the parts. Obviously, they're all nicely labeled. Eight. Now, some of the parts are plastic, like... Uh, this, I think it's the bottom part of the turret. Side plates here on the turret. Various other parts. The tracks. The tracks are metal, I do believe. And they have pads on them as well, just like the real thing. All parts. The barrel is aluminium, as you can see. Lastly, detailed as well. I like the camo scheme. I think some of these parts are uh, out of actual metal as well. It's got springs and all that kind of stuff. So it operates and opens like the real tank. And this part here, here's actually metal. Let's open it quickly. I can show you what I'm talking about. It's one solid piece of metal. Nice to see, not just plastic where it gives it. Uh, RC tanks should be fairly heavy, you know, in my opinion. Just gives it more realistic driving experience and when the suspension's going over rough terrain and all that kind of good stuff. And the last piece we have for stage one is the other parts here. So I'll get everything separated. Let's get download the manual like always and uh, let's pick into stage or pack number one. Okay, so some of these steps in the stages are really quick. So for example, step one is just putting this piece on top of that. Easy as pie. So it requires you to get uh, pack one and two, which is this one here. So parts of those two to start building first up. So we need to get the barrel, it says here, and this piece here, this is long piece, which is, this is aluminium as well. And basically it just says to thread it in there. Just like that, and I do like when it's threaded, it still matches the camo scheme. There we go. Nice. I don't think there's any glue in this particular stage. A lot of it is hardware fixed, which is what you want for an RC tank, especially going over rough terrain and all that kind of stuff. All right, next step, we're getting this piece, and this other one just slots in like that. Got to pressure fit it to these little pins up there to make sure it's the right way around. And that's going to line up in the holes that are in there, and we're going to be attaching it with some. It says CP screws. Now the bags are labelled as well, so you're not going to get confused. They do say the number, the bag number, and all that kind of stuff on the actual bag itself. So these are CP screws. Don't over tighten them, it actually warns you in the manual as well. So you don't need to go too crazy. So I'll put these four screws in and we'll get to the next step. But uh, that's how she's looking so far. Okay, that's how that step look. And just quickly, if you want to know how amazing detail you can get on these Agora models, just check out this. This is a zero I'm building at the moment. Check out that motor. It's got an electric motor in here that actually spins a prop around. These cowlings move up and down like they fold open just like the real thing. So this is what you can expect from these models. Absolutely fantastic. Okay, now back onto the tank. Now I don't think I mentioned this, but for example, you got these little icons. That just means like a press fit. You've got one with a little hammer. That means just hammer it down and all that kind of stuff. So it's very easy to follow. So that's the part we just, we just completed. Now next we need to get this clear piece, which it said to pressure fit. Now we get our piece and we just line it up and make sure it's all good. And they're like the prisms out of the uh, portholes, I believe. There you go there. So no glue, no screws, just uh, pressure fit that down for the moment and that's all that is. Next up, we're getting the hatch here. Now we're going to slide it through here, push up like this. It's going to actually operate as well. We've got a spring that we're going to use. Here's a spring that gets in clear with the kit. It says put this spring back on and lock it down with the screw. So I'll get that screw, lock it down, and I'll show you how it looks. Just screw this down. And this, along with that switch and the barrel, is this first stage complete. So if you should be able to lift it up and rotate it like that. That's pretty sweet, and you can lock down just like that. There we go. One step, 
There was a second piece that was so easy and screw on this additional barrel piece to there and that is all aluminium like I said. That's done. Next up, moving on to the side of the turret. This will be the right side of the turret and we're going to get this huge clump of metal and start working on that. We're going to be locking both the hatches down onto the top hole here, lining everything up. And once it's done, locking away with four screws. Very easy. Uh, they, like I said, they're labelled. I think they were the CP1 screws. Put it in there and just don't over tighten it. Now, with the loader's hatch as well, I believe so. have got the commander's hatch and the loader's hatch. Let's lock that away with one screw for the momentum so you can see. It's basically the detail we're looking at there. And this other one is going to go on this side, obviously. So I'll find the screw and I'll lock and load that away. Attached from the top here, locks down like that, and uses a small AP screw just to secure it. That is it. I do like how they're not glued and they're actually fixed hardware wise, makes it so much better. There's one hatch, and the other one that can pop up on the spring. Nice. Next up, we have the ring here. It's going to be positioned next to this hatch. Make sure the holes are all lined up, and they're going to get screwed from under the bottom. Put one so I can show you how it looks once it's held it down. Held down, sorry. There we go. Looking good. Put another one in. Now, I like how these are, like I said before, attached because if you really wanted to paint it later, you could disassemble it, I guess, and paint it to your liking. But it does look, the paint and the insignias and that kind of stuff will look really good from the first, first get go. Okay, just finishing up the last screw. There we go. Look good now. The last step we have to put in this other, is it like a prism, I believe? just sits in just in this slot just here that was a really tight fit but uh, there we go now it's just locked away with two AM screws and that is that stage complete as I said it's really easy to build fun too I like building these larger models but uh, regardless I, I, I'm really enjoying that zero actually the intricacies and the details in that motor Incredible. Here we go. Lock the loaded. Is that stage complete? Okay, since we've completed those two hatches, stage four is uh, actually now working on the sides of the turret. It's first we're going to be working on what's that? The left side. And it's just a pressure fit. This is plastic, this additional piece. Flip it over and we're going to lock it away with five screws. I'll put all these in and I'll, I'll show you. I try to keep these videos fairly. I know they can be long, but fairly short because I don't want to watch, I don't think you want to watch me screwing in every single screw. But there we go, so I'll watch you put the screw there, that'll squash that all down and I'll show you how this looks when it's all done. Nice fit and finish, everything lines up perfectly. So that's that, and the next step, we do have the first section of tracks. Now let's have a look at these. On real RC tanks, some of these tracks can become very expensive. I'll show you the detail there. These look like separately applied pieces for like the pads. So that's two piece. And the uh, pins themselves are metal pins. And it's going to slide through and mix off with one of these little press fit. Yeah, pieces as well, and that's metal as well. So, oh, this is metal. Okay, putting the tracks together, it's got to make sure you follow the instructions because there are little raised pieces on these metal links, and uh, they need to be facing the right way up. There's like this little nub up there. It's got to make sure that's facing upwards when you put them together. And the pins on the side that hold them together, these two pins just here, you see the the cross section, it's got a, one's got like a little concave, that has to be facing down. Line these up, get our center piece, make sure it's facing upwards. It's a bit tricky to do in the hand, but I'll do it. Manage, line these up. Make sure this nub is up like that, I just noticed. And then we just gotta make sure this piece is down. 
when I, when I put it on, it'll make so much more sense. It's just harder to do. Obviously, we're doing this on a flat surface. There we go. So, see that cross section? It's got that indent that faces down. And in the middle one, super hard to see, it's got this little ridge or little knob, you want to call it, that's facing up. And then end pieces, because it goes on the end, and you hammer it home, it says. Both concave sides are facing down, and the little knob's facing up. So that's it. So whenever there's a track section, oh, I'm not going to bother showing you it again on camera, but that's it. They look nice. I like the separately applied pads and stuff. Hopefully they hold up. But they look really good. Just a quick one on the tracks, I don't think I mentioned in the first part. When you're building these, you see that the track has like a little step that goes, you know, you can see it's a seat here. And you can see it there as well. So when you're building these, you don't want these butting up like that. You want them to be on either side of each other. And if you can see that, this part here, like the chamfered part, you want them to be on the opposite side of each other. Because it's easy to do it like this butting up like that, but you want them to be just like that. Okay, that's step four. There's the three track links that we get. Nice and heavy, even though it's only three links, but that's good. Now we have to pack five, stage five, or part five, what do you want to call it? And these are the parts that go on the side of the turret. So I've got all the parts laid out, I've got all the screws, and I'll show you where they all go. First up, follow the instructions, really easy, and they say, when you screw them, don't overdo them, which, uh, you know, that could be easy when it's going into plastic, because these side part is plastic. And the little handle here, you can go either way you think, but there's a little key, a little raised section there, and that's going to fit in just like that. And the screws we need for them, it tells you clearly as well, are FP screws. Too tight, there we go. Looks really cool. And uh, now, I've got to put on this hinge, I believe it's a hinge so it can open up. Now, it's indented, as you can see, this part is metal, which is nice. Goes in like that, BP screws. Put them in there. Lock them loaded, don't they? I like building these these kits, it's kind of therapeutic to me. You had a busy, you know, work day. It's nice to just unwind and you know, build a kit. Especially, I, I love painting and stuff like that, but something about uh, building a kit that's already painted, also, I don't know, something about it as well. But there we go, so that's that step, as you can see. There we go. Last piece as well that goes on the side, we have another handle. It's slotted as well, that goes in here. This one has two notches, the other one only had one, so you, can, you know which one's which. That goes in here and locked away with the same screws that we use on the side. And moving on, we attach these two pieces together, and because this is a hinge, that's how it opens up. And now we have this little plate. I've already put one on just now, just so I can show you how it works. It just goes on here and it's held on with these tiny little GP screws they're called. There we go. I'll put the last one in and then eventually we'll attach it to the side of the tank, this whole piece. Now this left side is going to be attached to the left side of this upper part of the turret. Kind of push it in. Carefully put it in there. It should snap in there nicely and that's locked away with two BP screws. Tight fit that one. Let's push that in, lock it. And then, man, that's a mad friction fit as it is. There we go. There's, they're all flush in there. Only need two screws. And that's it. That's another stage completed. And there we go. Moving on to stage six. That's cool. So it's a lock in there. Oh, there's a little screw there if you want. You can... Oh, there we go. Screws that down to lock it in. You don't want that to uh, open up. Nice. So it's coming along really nicely now. Part six, it's fairly easy. This big chunk of plastic is just going to sit down like that to complete the other side. And it's going to be held on with five EP screws. And you'll notice when you're building this kit, every single bag will have one screw left and it gives you a spare screw. And you might notice like, I have this piece left, uh, you think, well, I haven't been used yet, might have missed something. You know, you haven't missed it, you'll use it later on in the stages or when you get some other pack. So this is held down with five of these screws, I'll uh, button that up and see how it looks. There we go. Nice and secured. Another part here looks like another sight. It's going to go on the right side of the tank and it's just got like these little lugs that you kind of push together. The 
just like that. You can check that it's all secure at the bottom. Each of them have nice secure. There's three of those little lugs there that locks it in. It's not going anywhere. Now check out this. You don't use this yet. This machine gun is all metal. Not a bit of plastic on it. it does rotate, I'm sorry not rotate, but pivots up and down. But yeah, don't use that yet, You're using it for later. Now on this step as well, I'm not going to show again, this is just building, you get another three seconds of track, which will make another V. So I'll do that off camera, you don't need to see that again. And then next, step seven, will be the same thing we did with this side with the opening part. I'll uh, do that off camera and I'll show you when we're about to put it back on to the tank because it's just the same thing, just on the other side. Okay, so there's both sides. It's exactly the same as the other side, so don't waste too much time and keep the video fairly short. It's got these little screws on the side if you want to lock them away. But there we go, you can open them up. Just like that. Now, we've got this huge chunk. It's the back section of the upper turret, or turret in general, and it's just going to sit in just like that. Locked away with three screws, and this set also has another three track links. So, I assume that it's going to, every pack that you get is going to have a set of track links in there. <laughs> it's going to take a long, unless there's going to be a stage with just all track links. Which is, uh, that's going to be fun. And this is going to be pretty much finished this first pack for this Leopard 2A6. There we go. Look at that. That's massive. Check out that. Interested to see what transmission this is going to use. But, uh, nice. Well, what do you guys think so far? Because I think, we go into the instructions here. Yep, put that on. And it's just the other set of tracks. So, that's what I did. I'll do that off camera. That's it, guys. If you're interested in this, links will be down below. If you like, better give it a thumbs up. If you haven't, please subscribe. It's for free. And at least you'll keep, uh, a track of when the new video for this is and also for the zero I've got the new video coming up soon which will be the cockpit but there we go check out that let me know what you guys think appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you next time